Hey y'all, my name is Sherelle, recording artist, rapper, creative, yeah. Yeah. You got anything uh, that you're working on that you want to tell us about? Yeah, um, got a project that I'm working on, new singles about to come out, top of the year. So yeah, just been busy with that. Really excited to share it. It's been a while. You guys, I'm going to make sure I drop all her links uh, below, so make sure you click them, all of them. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> so how long have you been in the industry making music? Ooh, I've been in the industry making music for a little over 10 years now. Yeah, okay. I've, been, I've been in the industry for a while. What you said? How old are you? Oh, I'm 31. Ooh, black don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Black don't crack. Okay, so... Um, now that I know how old you are, that's actually, it's a good starter question. So what would you say the difference is in the way, um, that your male counterparts approach you, um, now versus when you were young and first starting out? Uh, I feel like now I get way more respect. It's, it's a little different. When I first started out, a lot of men would try to, you know, shoot their shot and then do business or something like that. And then, you know, so you had to, I had to kind of navigate my way through that. Now it's different though. I don't know, maybe I just have that aura now that's different that I'm a grown bitch and it's just like, don't, you know, I'm a business bitch. So they don't, I don't get a lot of that anymore. But when I was younger, definitely, definitely got a lot of uh, shoot a shot, see what sticks and maybe we'll work on something. And I was just never, never about that. Yeah, I feel like that's something that I run into a lot because I do, like, the photos. And so people are like, oh, well, she shows sex appeal. So that means she's going to want to fuck me for these photos. And it's always like, that's not my thing. And you might have some people that do that. And uh, if that's what you do, ladies, I respect you. Cool. Yeah. That's just not my business. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that that... What do you think, like... Okay, off-topic question. Do you think that the girls who are willing to do something strange in exchange uh, for goods and services, do you think that that affects the way that men see like the rest of us who are not gonna do something strange or it is exchange? Possibly, I mean, we can never know because it's. I feel like the root cause of all of that is just misogyny. So uh, <laughs> yeah, possibly, you know, I, I don't knock, I don't knock shit, you feel me? So especially with women, you can do whatever the hell you want and um, hustle how you want to hustle. I, I support I support all hustles. Uh, it's just how I navigate, how I move, what I'm comfortable with. But it, it could be. I just really think kind of leaning towards that way takes the blame off of creepy guys. And I'd rather keep keep it on. The I'd rather keep the spot. Yeah, I'd rather keep the spotlight on them and their behaviors that. versus what a woman is doing. So that's just me. Facts. I, I respect it, that. Yeah. You know, I think that a lot of times you're right. It's the misogyny and then we blame each other and we should not be blaming each other. No, I, I'm not with that. So um, as far as like studio goes, I've had some pretty interesting experiences uh, trying to find producers and things like that. Have you ever like been in the studio, like really working and had someone make you extremely uncomfortable? And if you have, how as a artist and a woman, as well as trying to keep yourself safe, do you navigate through that? Um, so my experience is, is kind of rare because luckily I have had a producer, Pete Rango, that's been with me this entire journey, who's extremely respectable man and one of my best friends so i haven't had a lot of experiences with getting like that in the studio um but i've i've been there i definitely have been there i've definitely been there um where it's my studio session and you don't even get addressed and they talk to the other men they don't greet you um i've made it a thing that i will just greet you myself and i will i will say oh hey i'm sherelle or you know thanks for coming to my session 
uh, something like that. And in a manner that's like, it's not necessarily overly aggressive, but it's just letting them know and you're setting the tone, like you already fucked up right. and I could just kick you out of this thing, you know? So I think for me, it's just more so making sure my presence is known, making sure my presence is felt as well and just not being afraid to speak up. But I, I've definitely been there where it's taken me a minute or so to do that because if it, it it catches you off guard and it makes you feel it makes you feel less than and you know I think that's just a human thing. No one wants to feel like that. Period. Exactly. So for me, but for me, it's just always making sure that nah, you you're gonna respect me. If I have to fight for my respect, I will. I'm I'm okay with that. I think that that is that's basically how I uh, I try to go about it too because except for I'm. I'm I like I'm very guilty of being extremely aggressive. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, yeah. I can't like I try. I'm like I'm just gonna calmly tell them to fuck right off. But it's like like for example, I do photography. So if I'm doing a shoot and someone's boyfriend is there and I have like a man with me or just there's a man there with a model that I'm working with, they they automatically address the male as if he's gonna be the one doing the work. And I'm like. Yeah. This man holding the light bulbs, okay? He not doing nothing. <laughs> Period. Like that's my staff. Yeah. You, you you have to sometimes assert your dominance in in a male dominated world. Um, it's just is what it is. You're gonna run into that type of energy whether you want to or not. I sometimes I don't even know if male men are aware of how they what they do sometimes with that. And yeah. I'm gonna make you aware though. You might. You gonna learn today is my thing. It's like you're gonna be aware next time. I bet you come around me, you're on you're you know, working with Sherelle, you're gonna say hi. You're gonna you're gonna address me in a respectable manner. So yeah, you gotta assert your dominance. So speaking about um men just looking over women, let's talk about um Queen Nasty for a second, because we all saw what she just went through. Um have you had an experience similar to that before, like opening up for a male artist? Uh, you talking about Rico? Yes. Oh my God, I hate that so much. Um, actually, I haven't, and it was really heartbreaking to to see that, and especially, you know, Cardi not stepping in or her team, his team not stepping in and saying something because as artists, we do we can control our fans in a sense because you know fan base becomes like a family so you you can it's a community so you can step on stage and say hey y'all like y'all gotta stop the fuck shit or we're gonna kick y'all out the people that are throwing anything whatever when she's on stage you you know, we'll get security i just think it's unfortunate that you know somebody of rico's caliber and talent is experiencing something like that when I mean, her music's incredible, uh, you know? So, and then his fan base is just a bunch of fucking hype beast dweebs, you know? I'm sorry. I They don't even get the term hype beast, though, because they're appropriators, and that's it. That's true. That's true. They're just not of the culture, unfortunately, and that is what it is, you know? Cardi's, you know, I'm also a Cardi fan. It's just unfortunate that she had to experience that, and I, I, I felt for her because I really felt like it was affecting her mental health. And she's human, so why wouldn't it? That's sorry. There's I live in downtown LA. There's a lot of ambulances. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I haven't experienced that. I haven't experienced that. But I I'm sure I would have kind of the same reaction. I I really hope her team or his team or uh, steps in and does something or takes her off the tour or something like that. Because honestly, Rico could just headline her. So to be real, like that was one of the <laughs> first of all. She's one of those, I, I have to say, like, I've been to a lot of concerts. I've been to a lot of shows. I've been to raves. One of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had was seeing Rico Nasty. I mean. Sure. I want to see her. So I love, I, I'm such a Rico fan, yo. You have, I feel like as a woman, as in, a woman in any type of artistry, you like have to respect Rico. First of all, she's young, like mad young. And, mm. and she just kind of like, made a couple songs and then it was like it was that was it and I feel like a lot of us we work really hard all the time for that exact thing like this song is going to be the motherfucking one and so but I feel like even if even if it was a male performer if your fans are 
literally assaulting someone and booing them off the stage. Like, you have to say something. You have to, because you believe in the artist. That's why she's opening, he or she, they, they're opening up for you. That's, that's your family. I'm sorry. That's what, that's how I look at it. People that open up for me or, I'm like, y'all, my fan, I support you. And that's why you're here, because it aligns with me. And it, yeah. it did make sense. I thought it made sense. The Rico Cardi, uh, it made sense to me, and I thought it was dope, but <laughs> it's disheartening. Yeah, it's, it's disheartening that this happened. Absolutely. Um, Wow, we're already at 12 minutes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, so you, you were a little scared to come on the show because it was called What's the Horror 1 1. Um, I named the show What's the Horror 1 1 because I want it to be um, woman centered and empowering. And I think that bitch, horse, slut, like those are our words and we should take them back. Um, what is your favorite naughty word that's like woman centered? Um, I really like slut. Slut, slut is good. I, I like that. Um, that's my empowerment word. I call yeah. my, I call, you know, hoes. I call all my, my homegirls hoes, sluts. Or, you know, you're being slutty. I think, I think that's hot. Oh, uh, I think that's hot. You know, so that's, yeah, slut's probably top number one. We like cunt over here. I feel like cunt is like. Like cunt? I, I told you I'm a little gross. kind of gross to me. I don't know why, like cunt. I'm just like, the, the, the unt part of it is like, I don't know. It's, it does something to me. My best friend says the same thing. She's like, stop fucking calling me a cunt. It makes me feel nasty. <laughs> yeah, it makes me feel nasty, like filthy. But slut, you know, I love core too. I love them all. But uh, yeah, cunt's probably at the low, the low end of the list. I like cunt. <laughs> I feel like it's aggressive. It, it feels like a punch in the gut. Like, it is. It's very aggressive. It's like you you beating someone's ass. Like I don't feel sexy when it's on. You know I don't like. Let me don't call me a cunt. Let me let me lick your cunt. I'm like oh my god. Like, yeah, that shit hey, is, is kind of like the cock. Um, yeah. Dirty. I, but cock is still like still has a little more fluff to it. I don't I know. Hate the word cock. Like if they're like you want to suck my cock. No. Yeah, that's a you know. I don't sleep with white men, though. So. Yeah, like, hey, that's like male. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, don't know how that, I don't know how that goes. <laughs> I don't know. I've had a black man say that to me, like, you, you, you like this cock. And I'm like, where are you from? Yeah, what you doing? I mean, do you, boo, but I, that's not that's not my jam. Not me doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um... Let me see. I had a couple more questions. I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> I feel like I should write these down, but I don't like doing that because it doesn't feel as, like, organic. Conversational. I feel yeah. you. Okay. There it is. I got it. All right. What do you do before making any art? Like, so before a show, before you hit stew, before you take some photos, what are you doing to feel, like, the sexiest slut? Um, it, I think it varies for all of those, to be real. Uh, for music, I tend to, honestly, my music is just inspired by my life. So if I'm living and having fun, I'm feeling sexy in real life, I'm feeling sexy in my music, to be very honest. So that that just, that just dips and flows, you feel me? Uh, photo shoots and stuff like that when it comes to visual art, you know, I'm always pulling up inspiration of things or in, inspiring people you know, through history to look at and, and get and get pumped. Listening to music too, sexy music. I love, R I'm an R&B girl. I'm like 21 Savage. I love listening to R&B. I probably listen to R&B more than I listen to rap. So that kind of puts me in my sexiness. You know, I feel, I feel the sexiest when I listen to like Janet Jackson and shit like that. You know, so I'll... Hold R&B too, that good shit. Yeah, like that good, like I, I really love R&B and that gives me really great creative energy because honestly sexual energy is creative energy absolutely and it's the same so when I feel sexy I create my best work on all spectrums of art and I think that's the power of being a woman because that power is like in our womb you know and and it's uh can I say that <laughs> I love you too but yeah that's 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 just that's just my thing so it's I gotta feel sexy to create sexy so I try to stay, I try to always stay on that sexy uh, wavelength. <laughs> yeah, people are always like, Mari, 
you're always so sexual. Why is everything always so? And I'm like, bitch, my whole, everything that I make is accompanied by like, I serve face card, I serve titties, I'm serving hips, and that shit makes me fucking feel good, bitch. And you gonna know it makes me feel good. No, and I think it's important, you know, because like throughout my life, even my journey as a woman, I've definitely have had body issues. I've been insecure. And owning my body and owning my sexual energy is really important to me at this stage in my life, especially. So who gives a fuck? I, and that's the thing. It's just like, it makes you feel good. And I'm doing it for that. I'm not doing it for, and I think a lot of women can agree. You yeah. know, it's like, I'm not doing it for somebody else or any type of attention. It just literally makes me feel powerful and empowered and confident when my sexual, when I feel sexy. When I don't feel sexy, I don't create good art. I and also even create art. Yeah, I feel depressed. Um, I think, you know, and that ties into a whole other conversation of mental health with, with an art, artist. But uh, when I don't feel sexy and I don't feel my best, I don't create my best. And so I have noticed that. What you said? I said, let's pause real quick. You think okay. we're all fucked up? Do I think we're all fucked up? Uh, all like, artists. You think we're all a little fucked up? I think every artist has their struggles with mental health um, and there's hella spectrums with everything. And I think especially these days in the social media culture, it adds an extra weight. Um, Cause right now we're dealing with output and content and constant content and algorithms and things that, you know, previous generations didn't have to deal with. So right. it is, it is tough, you know, um, I suffer from depression and anxiety. Like, I, I don't give a fuck. I'll be open about it. I've been in therapy. Well, I just actually graduated therapy. Shout out to me. <laughs> but I was in Wait, therapy. You can graduate therapy? Yeah, if your therapist feels that you've, like, accomplished what you set out to accomplish, then you can, you know. I've been in therapy since I was, like, eight, hey, bitch. I was well, that's, I mean, it's everybody has their different journeys, and, like, I went for specific reasons, you know, it's everything's different. Oh, everything we're gonna clap you for want. You. Thank you. But I was in therapy for two and a half years and I didn't realize, you know, how much my creativity was affected by anxiety and depression. Um, a little bit of ADHD, aren't we fucking all? Um, but that that was that was conversations and I had to have with myself and it opened up a lot of things for me. So yeah, so it's like moving forward with me as an artist, I'm really centered around wellness and health and doing things that make me feel good and realizing that me feeling my best personally is how I create my best. Every artist is different, um, but that's that's what I focus on. I think, you know, I struggle. So I have borderline personality disorder um, and bipolar too, as well as anxiety and depression. And so I think I had reached out to you like a couple months ago. I was like, hey, can you listen to this for me? I felt comfortable reaching out to you because you're like a woman. So you weren't going to hear what I was making and be like, oh my God, what the fuck is this? Like, why is she talking about her pussy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like for me, I get so, I make art for myself, but then before I'm going to put it out, I'm like, I'm putting this out now, which means other people are going to, and if it's not, if it's not getting enough attention, then people are going to think I suck. Even if I don't think I suck because I have to put it out. Like, if I don't put it out, nobody's going to hear it. But do I want anybody to hear it? Because it's for me. And I think, like, sorry, I, I do that a lot. Um, a lot. But I think, I think that it's, like, something like that. I know a lot of artists do. Hey, check out this track. And I think that people, especially social media, like, get so annoyed. Like, oh, my God, why the fuck are these people always, like, telling me to listen to their shit? But... If you really stop and think about the stuff that someone has to go through to give you, like when we're making art, we're giving all the things that we're feeling in that moment to the paper, to the camera, to the to the shit. There's a whole lot of other things, but that's what's there right now. To the mic, you know. <clears throat> and so I feel like, <clears throat> um, I feel like so much lower. Like I feel like most of the dudes that I follow, they're putting out a track a week. And I'm like, damn, bro, <laughs> like, you you in debt. Like, I know you paid a lot for that studio time. Um, yeah. I feel like we have such complex emotions in that 
like giving that to your craft, I feel like it takes more of a toll. So do you think, I'm sure you know a lot more, you know, actually, you know, a lot of the women that I look up to. So do you think that um, that's something like a trend or a pattern that you've noticed in like women artists as well? Yeah, I feel like um, productivity and the pressures of creating constant content is taking its toll already uh, on our generation specifically. Um, it's taking its toll on me specifically. I've had to look at it different ways and try to make sure that I'm putting my health first, even if it means feeling like you're not in the rat race or you have FOMO. You get a lot of different thoughts when you are watching other people. I feel like social media has made this, has created this like comparative lifestyle, right? Where you're just like constantly scrolling on IG and all you see are like celebrations or like hot photos or people constantly pumping out and like labels. But the thing is, a lot of the artists, you know, you got to understand they got big budgets behind them sometimes too. And there's things that you can just be like, hey, like, this is where I'm at. I'm doing great. I'm fine. But sometimes for me, it takes just not being on social media for a couple of days a week or even making sure. Yeah, just making sure that, like, I'm being mindful. Like, this week was tough for me, actually, personally, with that. Um, I got a lot going on, but I've been scrolling, like, way too much and thinking, I, you know, I have a lot that hasn't been released yet. So I'm working and I'm being productive, but I haven't released it. So I feel like I don't, I'm not doing anything, right? right. And I'm on, like, I'm on IG and I'm like, damn, man. I'm like, damn, I only did. And then I'm just like, no, nah, bitch, you need to get off of IG. You had an amazing year. I did, you know, I have to have these conversations with myself. And right. that's what's become kind of dangerous about social media. I feel like as women as well, we may create differently. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's, you know, we have different energy. But for me personally, it's just been having to have these talks with myself and checks, checks in with my mental health in order to survive this because it's not going away, you know, like, I feel like we have to adapt and adjust. But for me, it's just like the goal is always to adapt um, authentically and then to adapt um, and making sure my, my health is front and center, you know, it's a priority. But it gets, it gets to be a lot. It gets to be a lot. And I think artists aren't celebrated enough and we don't make enough money. A lot of people, a lot of artists don't make enough money. Um, so I know so many independent artists that are juggling jobs with art. Fuck a uh, job. Fuck a job. I just fuck quit a job. A job. My fucking boss called me a whore today or yesterday. Oh my God. Go to eight. Well, make a case on that shit. First of all. Get, your, get a coin. Small business, and she owns it. So uh, I don't know how to do it, and like she called me a whore. Better business borough, baby. You motherfucking right. And she yes. did whore in a good way. I know. I said I like that. Yeah, word. yeah. No, no, because we know. We know the difference. Yeah. You know, it's different. They call me ex shirt and shit. Like she just be like low key hating. I'm gonna make a whole episode about that, y'all. So that link will be yeah, down. Fuck her. But um, it, but um. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'll, I'll keep Instagram coming. just offered me monetization, which is like okay. fucking amazing. So basically, they're gonna like pay me two cents per view on each reel. Oh, fire. Oh, shit. ever since they've offered me monetization, I can't even make my like, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just not gonna, I just, I don't know. And like, I told my fans that I was gonna do a December 30 days of poetry. And I just can't like make myself do it. And I, I, but I'm on, I'm always on there. I'm looking at other people's reels because I'm comparing myself to them, trying to figure out why I'm not doing it. And I think you're right. Like, okay, how do you make yourself stay off social media? That's my question because a bitch be struggling. Um, make myself stay off social media? Oh, it's really fucking difficult. Uh, honestly, this week it's just been, been putting my phone on DND. Um, and just working on other stuff. Honestly, just putting my my phone face down, even like that. I I've I've also noticed that like it's a pattern for me. Like even when I I'll check my text messages, right? I'll send a text, and then my pattern is to just like go on Twitter and scroll and like go on IG. And like I 
I wasn't even aware that I was doing all of that. You know what I mean? I was like, oh shit, I'm always logged on. God damn. So to me, this week was like, I was just like, okay, I'm just watch Netflix or I'm going to work on this song. I was really trying uh, to bring that screen time, bring that screen time down. Uh, but you know, even Apple, if you got an Apple phone, they have like a screen time Exactly. notifications I literally tell that bitch to fuck off yeah but I was about to say sometimes I just ignore that I'm like bitch this is my phone I'm like I put it there but I'm mad that you tell you're reminding me um tell me to take my but, morning I'm like bitch I don't want to take my vitamins you why are you me? telling me this shit yeah it's it's a constant you know it's a constant struggle I'm human I'm not perfect at it it's just I'm more aware of it and I just try some days I try some days I, I'm successful other days I'm fucking not but I just this is the world we live in, unfortunately. And fortunately, there's, there's great opportunities through social media. You feel me? Yeah. But the downside of it is it can affect your mental health. It really can. So we're at 28. So I'm going to ask my last few questions. These ones are going to be, like, super fun. Yeah. Okay. Who do you have? What woman do you have the biggest celebrity crush on? Like, who is your bitch? Kalani. Oh, my God. I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I need a. I need a feature. I want to be her friend. Like, I, I love her so much. Yeah, Kehlani. Okay, well, mine is actually Rico. I love Rico, too. That's my bitch. I just, like, mm, I just be looking at her, and I be like. Yeah, she's gorgeous. She's so she's, fine. Yeah. My best friend kind of look like Rico, and now I'm feeling, like, low-key gay feelings for my best friend. I don't know what I got. You your feelings? <laughs> like, they look actually a lot of, like, like, my best friend. She's built like her. And they have like the same nose. Can you, me? Can you just say Rico? <laughs> but she hates Rico Nasty. Oh, that's that's crazy. Yeah, how is that your friend? How you hate Rico Nasty? Because she, she okay, first of all, she's super R and B too. Oh, okay. and she's a singer. And so she says Rico just gives her a headache because it's too hype for her. And I'm like, well, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, fuck that. Rico's like, Rico's insane. Insane to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's my husband. Like, it, my my male celebrity crush is Abel Tessa Faye for sure. Um, okay. Oh, I have one more. Hold on. I'm going to have to cut this part out because I got to remember. Uh, where did it go? God damn it. I'm thinking about Rico Nasty. Um, got scrambled. Fuck. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you could die in one way sexually, like during one sexual act, what would it be? And who would it be with? You could pick a celebrity. I ain't gonna pick no celebrity. Damn it, I ain't gonna pick a celebrity. But if I were to die in a sexual act, I've actually thought about this. <laughs> Cause like, that's like the best way to go out, bitch. Like, to be real. Honestly, I'm a fucking, I'm a lover girl. Like, I would die a missionary, like, staring in my lover's eyes, like, holding my hand. You fucking Aquarius, god damn it. I know, I'm, I, I'm a lover girl, baby. I don't care. So that would, I, that's, to me, I want to go out fully, like, embraced by I my lover. you to, to reevaluate that. I know. I'm a, I'm a simp. I'm a simp. I don't care. Like, I don't care. I'll I be in love, girl. I'll be in love. I like, I love that shit. I want little Nas X to drown me with the <laughs> What? I want him to drown me with the bussy. <laughs> Yo, you're fucking wild. You're wild as fuck. But you know what? I know Lil Nas X Bussy would be clean as hell. So it's like. Exactly. It'd just be soft. <laughs> you're fucking nuts. Okay. Nuts. I ain't eating no ass. I'm trying to. I like. <laughs> But that's reserved for only Lil Nas X. I, baby, if you see this, I'll eat your ass. Come on. I, I know that thing clean. I know that thing clean as a whistle. Spotless. He look clean. Like, you look at him, you know he brush his teeth. He put yeah. on his behind his ears. Smell good. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. This is my uh, last question. It's not as funny. Um, What advice would you give someone my age? I'm 24, by the way. I don't know if I told you that. Oh, you a baby. Yeah. Um. What advice would you give someone, you know, my age or younger about, like, being authentically the woman that you are? Advice? Just honestly, 
make sure who you get advice from. <laughs> Make sure who you get advice from is also living their best authentic life. And who you get inspiration from is also living their best authentic life. But that's so hard. <laughs> what you mean? Like everybody's saying they live in one way on the social media. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. That's why I, that's what I'm saying this. is the people that you're scrolling, you don't know them like that. So you have to be more self-centered in that regard and, and really dig deep. And it takes time. And to never, you know, be too hard on yourself because these things take time and you got to bypass fear daily in order to live your authentic life. And it's okay if those days are harder than others, but you're human. <laughs> I think you're great. Um, also, your grills are sexy. I would lick them. <laughs> That's a big compliment. I actually bent my top grill today before this interview. Uh, but we getting it fixed. But I got my I got my bottoms in, you know. That's but. my favorite one. I, that's the one I that's want. My favorite one. I, that's like you can lick the bottom, but the top the top got bent. It's it's out of commission currently. But thank Come you. Yeah, I'm from. Gym. What you say? Come get some tooth gems. I don't really like tooth. I'm from South Florida, man. My culture I is real. You know what I'm saying? We go, we go, we go out. So it's like find some wicks. Some what? Some wicks. Oh, some wigs? Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it, but that's my culture for sure. That's my culture for sure. I, what do you know about wigs? Yesterday, I told this lady, she uh, she said she would lock his hair up. Then she told me she was from Florida. I said, oh, never mind. I ain't gonna get my son them ugly ass wigs. And she didn't take Hey, me. man. She didn't Don't take me. That's the culture, though. That's the island culture. You feel me? Fuck them island boys, but that's, that's, the, yeah. that's the island culture. They're weird. That's weird. They're weird. They're weird. Yeah, they're not my style, but that's that's our culture, you know. We got a lot of people from Caribbean, you know. So when we do dreads down there, they get real. They just let you let it flow. You just you just it's natural. I like the free forms, but yeah. I've been seeing motherfuckers getting lock extensions that look like fucking yarn to make wicks, and I'm like, baby, just just you don't need it. If you can't grow it, you don't need it. Uh yeah, I feel that. I feel that. But you know, I be getting wigs sometimes too, so I feel bad. Like you know, it's like ain't that wrong with a wig? I know that like, I be getting laced down, so it's Your like wig that's good though. This man shit <laughs> looks like somebody took some fucking yarn that was blonde. He had all black hair. You can see his black hair peeking through the bottom. It's just like wrapped in like blonde yarn. <laughs> You got to make sure your style, your hairstyle has got your back. Yeah, that, that, you don't want to be embarrassed out here. I feel it. Uh -uh. He must have let his, uh, his his girlfriend, homegirl do it, and they must have been mad at him. Cause it was fucking <laughs> I really appreciate you coming on, baby. I appreciate you having me. All right, I'm going to stop recording now. All right, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness.